There are enough batteries for your EVs. The bottleneck is overblown. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. A quick thanks to just a few of my new and upgrading patrons, John, DC Heath, MYC, and Brinjar. Since I don't do clickbait, Patreon is the only way I'm able to actually keep going, and I thank you for your decision to support the channel. Uh, also, this video was made with a lot of help from Jordan Giesegi over uh, Twitter direct messages, um, but he did not uh, fact check the final script or the preliminary script. He just gave me pointers. So any errors you see are mine, not his. So what are batteries made of? Well, they're made of a bunch of things. Uh, some are harder to get than others. Let's start with the easy stuff. The outside is made of metal. You know, like the steel or aluminum in the case of a cylindrical battery, or plastic in the case of a pouch battery. Those are all readily available materials. There's far less metal in a battery pack than an engine block, and some of those use aluminum, some use cast iron. It's about the same. It doesn't matter. Batteries use less. Then there's carbon, and while it can't be just any old carbon, the global supply of highly refined graphite suitable to use in a battery is robust and appears ready to scale up quickly. In the middle of the scarcity scale is lithium. Some cars use as little as 6 kilograms, while others use as much as 60 kilograms. This still isn't necessarily a bottleneck, since lithium is plentiful around the world. Much of the mining comes from hard rock deposits, which makes scaling refinement challenging, but an awful lot of it still comes from brine, which is just salty silt pumped to the surface and dried in large pools. This can be scaled more quickly. Even now, massive new deposits of lithium are being discovered. This isn't surprising, since lithium wasn't particularly prized until very recently, so a lot of exploration just wasn't looking for it. No gold or silver, no copper or nickel, coal, oil, natural gas. Yeah, a lot of the exploration just wasn't interested. Then at the rarer end of the spectrum, we find elements like nickel and cobalt. The demand for EV batteries may cause the price of nickel to rise, but it's unlikely to create a shortage. New nickel supplies do take longer to come online than lithium or graphite, but they're already ramping up, and the demand for batteries is expected to increase steadily in coming years, not just all at once, which will allow some time to get the supply chain in order. A bigger concern for nickel would likely be the unimaginable quantities needed to make the stainless steel shell for the Cybertruck, which Tesla expects to sell in very high volume. I made a whole video about that, which you can check out in the link in the description if you're interested. Cobalt is the only real concern on the list, or rather it would have been if battery technology hadn't developed the way it has over the past 10 years. Cobalt is a lot harder to find around the world, and some of it is mined in ways consumers may rightly consider objectionable. The good news on that front is that Tesla's latest batteries use less cobalt than ever before, and other battery chemistries than the ones you might think of when someone says lithium-ion often use none at all. There are new and varied battery chemistries. If there was only one kind of battery with only one kind of chemistry, bottlenecks would be harder to avoid. Fortunately, there are already others on the market, with more expected as soon as this year. Lithium iron phosphate batteries have been around for ages, and they work really well. Due to patents, they're only now showing up in the US in EVs, but they've been in cars in other countries for years. These LFP batteries don't use any nickel or cobalt, but they also don't have as much energy density as their high nickel counterparts that we just discussed. They do have a longer lifespan. They can be charged from 0 to 100% without causing damage, making them more attractive for a lot of buyers. They're also non-toxic, less prone to fire, and can be cheaper in many cases. And again, they don't use any of those less abundant minerals. CATL, the world's largest battery manufacturer, has also announced that they'll begin delivering a completely new battery chemistry later this year called sodium ion. Sodium and lithium are both salts, but sodium is so much more common that I bet you put it on your french fries. 
I mean, that's an oversimplification, but not by much. There's also LMFP, aka M3P batteries in the pipeline, but what's known about them is less certain, including when they could reach the scale necessary to become viable in the market. But other formulations, and even solid state batteries, may soon be able to pick up some of that slack. Recycling is no longer coming, it's here. A lot of the early critics of electric vehicles pointed out that there was no way to recycle batteries, and all those important elements are just going to go into a landfill somewhere, with all new material being dug up for the next generation of cars. I mean, they also like to say that batteries would only last 40,000, 80,000, 100,000 miles. And that may have been true on early EVs like the Nissan LEAF, which used air cooling instead of liquid cooling and saw charge capacities that fell off precipitously. It was also true for a number of early Tesla Model S owners who enjoyed free supercharging for the life of the vehicles, leading a number of them to be used as extremely high mileage commercial vehicles, always charging from extreme lows to absolutely full, which shortens the lifespan. Those factors combined, yes, shorten the lifespan of the batteries, though newer chemistries tend to fare quite a bit better. Recycling didn't exist at the time because there were no batteries to recycle, and it's only now an industry in its infancy because, despite having sold millions of cars around the world, the overwhelming majority of battery packs are still in service. Redwood Materials was just awarded $2 billion to further build out their recycling capabilities, and as more of these packs leave service, more of them will go right back into the supply chain. As Elon said, it's easier to extract minerals from a highly refined source, like a battery, than an unrefined source, like you would from mining ore. An increasing percentage of new EV batteries will see their minerals sourced from recycled cells as EVs begin to age out and hit the scrapyard. New battery factories are underway. Europe has built and is still building a ton of massive battery factories. China has hundreds. The US saw announcements of over 72 billion in new battery factories in 2022 alone. Now the first draft of this script said, surely they wouldn't all be building the factories without the minerals secured to make them. Uh, but Jordan Giesegi pointed me to a recent piece by Benchmark Minerals suggesting that these factories uh, may be overly optimistic in their abilities to source enough raw materials to actually reach full capacity. The factories in China are already running and are well supplied. The new ones will have to compete for materials contracts with the ones in Europe and the US, and I'm confident that they'll secure supplies, but for now it remains an aspirational target rather than a sure thing. So to say there are no obstacles, well, that'd be untrue. But it would be likewise untrue to say that there aren't thousands of people at hundreds of companies across dozens of countries working on it every day. So the long and short of it, as I see it, is that there are a variety of chemistries from a variety of companies in a variety of countries, all of whom more or less taking an all of the above approach. That's going to help. It just will. So the short-term battery prospects for growth are rock solid. The medium term also looks reasonably sound, though some battery manufacturers are likely to fare better than others, and that means some car makers will have better access to better batteries than the competition. And it's entirely possible that all of them will have all the batteries they need. So for the longer term, think six to ten years out, well that future is less certain, but manufacturers have the confidence in their supply lines, and honestly, I have confidence too, but we shall see. So what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave it all below in them comments, your juicy wisdom, your blinding brilliance. What did I get wrong? What did I get right? What am I not thinking about? So stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots at the pregame event in Austin, Texas on March 1st. Yes, that's a thing that's happening. Uh, it's free. You should come out. There's going to be pizza. There's going to be drinks. There's going to be uh, guest speakers. We're going to have drone pilots. We're going to have Ellie in space. We're going to have YouTubers. It's going to be a lot of fun. Door prizes. You name it. Sign up for the tickets if you wouldn't mind so we've got a pretty decent head count and know how much pizza to bring. And, uh, of course, uh, if you want to chip in on a ticket that costs more than zero dollars, you can do that. But there's no requirement. And as always, mad thanks to my patrons who get early access, bonus content, an ad-free experience in many cases, and help keep the channel running. 
I literally can't do it without you guys. And I thank you all so much. And there we go. This took a week, but I got it done.